Hi, I'm Paul McGuire, and uh, I want to talk to you about where our nation is going, America, where America is future, and that's on everybody's mind. It's certainly on my mind, because what happens to America is going to impact the entire world because of America's unique geopolitical uh, vantage point, if you will. Now, um, I, I want to bring you this message with a, a sense of sobriety because I see a convergence of economic, social, political, theological factors uh, that America is in a period of what I would call hyper-acceleration. Now, let's just talk briefly about the economic situation. The dollar uh, has lost its value. Some people say the dollar has lost 35% of its value since 2008. Personally, I think it's lost 50% of its value, not based on any scientific measurement, but based on my own personal observations of its buying power, like when I go to the grocery store and what it costs me to buy groceries or the gas station or whatever. Now, economists have said that the middle class in America have not experienced a pay increase since 1965. Wow. So not only is the dollar devalued, but when you take into account the entire economic situation, what was once called the middle class in America has not experienced a pay increase since 1965. That means that if you consider yourself middle class, and that would probably be most of you, even if you don't consider yourself middle class, um, you don't have the purchasing power or access to the lifestyle that your parents had. Now, if you go back to 1965, people were buying large houses, they were driving large cars, and they were buying food, and America was in a period of economic growth and economic productivity, and an economic boom, if you will. Like it or not, those were the good times in, in many respects. That isn't happening now because our dollar is devalued, our jobs have been outsourced, and we have a massive deficit. And in addition to that, we have these enormous health care costs these enormous retirement costs that are going to impact future generations. So America is in a quantum acceleration. We're not going towards an economic crisis. We're in an economic crisis. Now, I warned about that in my book, The Day the Dollar Died, which I wrote a number of years ago, and I'm getting emails every week, every day, from people who said, you know, I, I was very skeptical, Paul, about what you wrote, but everything you said has come true. And now these people are learning that some of the things that I said, such as the nature of the Federal Reserve and so on and so forth, is accurate. So, That economic crisis that I predicted in the day the dollar died, the deliberate destruction of the dollar, the devaluation of the dollar, is occurring now. And part of what is accelerating that is nations like China and Australia and Iran <clears throat> and many other nations are now trading among themselves using their own currency and they're not trading with the dollar. So the dollar is slipping from its status as the de facto world currency. Now, that's huge because that's going to cause the, the economic might of the United States to, to fall off a cliff, if you, if you will. And you, you may be listening to me and you live in South Africa or Australia or, 
or China or Great Britain or whatever, and, and you say, well, how does that affect me? Well, it does affect you because America, good or bad, has been a stabilizing factor for the entire world. Now, what happens when you break up the dollar and you have competing world currencies? And some of the nations that are competing with their currencies have an adversarial relationship to your nation. Well, it's going to cause economic chaos. It's going to cause widespread unemployment. Just look at the riots that occurred in Europe, in Greece, and Cyprus, and places like that due to unemployment, but due to the fact that the government simply didn't have the money to pay people's retirement plans because the governments were broke. Well, that, that's happening in the United States of America. You can't have an $18 trillion uh, deficit and pay people's retirement benefits with a shrinking uh, number or pool of people contributing their tax dollars into the retirement system. Um, if you don't have a lot of players on the bench, so to speak, there's nobody to fund retirement. And that's what's happening in the United States of America and the European nations. So that is an economic crisis. Now, when an economic crisis occurs, you have destabilization of the entire system and of the entire society. You have food shortages, you have riots in the inner cities, you have uh, chaos, you have anarchy. And the system uh, breaks down to one degree or another. And in a worst case scenario, the, the system, I'm talking about the economic system in the United States of America, could go into a death spiral. And that would mean martial law to manage the chaos. Now, uh, my mentor, Dr. Francis Schaeffer, the, the greatest evangelical uh, scholar of the last century um, said these words. He said that as our society, and he meant Western societies in the United States and Europe and places like that in Australia, he said that as our society breaks down because of the rejection of absolutes, moral absolutes, um, and these other factors like the economy, that authoritarianism, he said, either from the right or the left, will rise up to manage the chaos, to restore order. What a lot of people don't understand is many people are very concerned that the left is grabbing power, and I certainly understand that concern. Um, they have used judicial activism to, to go around the Constitution and mandate through the courts uh, their agenda. Or they have used other non-constitutional means to uh, move forward a, a progressive agenda. But that's only one cause for concern. Another cause for concern would be an overreaction by what we could call a right-wing overreaction, where there are people who um, have reached the boiling point, and they rise up from the what the media calls the far right. I don't think that's an honest term, but uh, the media calls the far right. And then you have the danger of authoritarianism coming from the right. And that's why Dr. Schaefer said it doesn't matter whether authoritarianism comes for the right or left to manage the chaos. Once you have authoritarianism in place, the Orwellian state, which we see emerging uh, all around us, you have a loss of freedoms. Religious freedoms are lost. Personal freedoms are lost. Freedom of speech is lost. Totalitarianism uh, uh, arises. You have an Orwellian government that micromanages the people and you can't uh, share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Your, your standard of living is way down and that's eminent on the American horizon. Now I wrote my book, A Prophecy of the Future of America, 
to warn about that and other things. And A Prophecy of the Future of America is about 414 pages. Um, it's a thick book. In actuality, <laughs> it was 1,400 pages. And uh, I, I had so much information and research that I wanted to communicate. So I had to uh, shape it so that the mo most powerful points in the books, in the book, uh, could be communicated uh, to people. And so I got it down to 414 pages. And in this book, and I, and, and I want to preface this by saying I'm not here to sell a book, believe me. I've written 22 books. This is my 23rd book. I don't need to write another book. I didn't need to write this book. And I didn't write it to write just another book. The, the world doesn't need another book. I don't need another book. Um, and I didn't write it just to make money. Um, it, it's not that the, the ministry that we have doesn't need funds, because all, all the, the, the profits of the book, by the way, go directly into the ministry. They don't go to me. Um, so I'm not profiting personally by the books. The, the, the funds that people use to buy the books go back into the ministry. Um, but I felt this, if you will, a divine call. Uh, and I, I say that with he hesitation because I don't want to risk sounding uh, uh, proud or arrogant. But I felt a divine call to write this book as a prophetic warning to America, and I don't uh, elevate myself to the status of a of a Ezekiel or an Isaiah or uh, a Joel or a Daniel. I'm not putting myself in that position. I want you to know that. Um, but the the book is a prophetic warning in the sense that Francis Schaeffer issued a prophetic warning. Now, the book is based on over. 37 years of research. Actually, the book is based on research that began when I was 15 years old. And you say, how, that can, how can that be? Well, I grew up in New York City. Uh, I demonstrated with the radical activist Abby Hoffman when I was 15. I saw the weathermen in Central Park recruiting people. Uh, they didn't recruit me because it was obvious to me, even at 15, uh, the product of a secular humanist household a liberal household in New York. Uh, it was obvious to me that communism was complete failure, so why would I want to be part of the Weather Underground where their game plan is to move us into a Marxist state when, in my opinion, Marxist states are a horrible failure. Now, um, so those observations shaped my uh, worldview. And so the book is based on intensive research into the fields of economics and uh, uh, history, uh, theology, uh, the Bible, the history of the Bible, um, political movements, occult movements, uh, and, and secret societies, if you will. And no, it's not a conspiracy theory book because uh, even though I deal with things like uh, uh, Babylon and the Tower of Babel, which means the gate of God, uh, a portal uh, built by Nimrod. I don't, uh, everything in the book is documented, um, and that's important for you to understand. And in the book, I basically communicated for, in, in a fast-moving format, uh, a accelerated means of educating the reader uh, to what's going on in America and the world, what we can expect in the near future, and why it's going on. And this is stuff I didn't learn uh, at a university because they didn't teach this stuff. They don't teach this stuff in universities. This is the secret in this book. I disclose the secret occult plan for America as well as God's plan for America. But I reveal the secret history that they don't want you to know about America and the world, which is not taught in our universities or by our media. So I had to go outside that box to find it. 
and it took me into some incredible research, which is very applicable to our time period, because I integrate Bible prophecy, the prophetic scriptures, into my economic, um, political, sociological uh, research. So, based on being educated, when you're educated, and many of you are, when you're educated, for example, about history and economics, you know what's going to happen in America in the near future because your education has given you the ability to analyze where we're going. So anybody who's educated concerning history knows exactly where America is going in the near future. The only people who do not know where America is going in the near future are those people who are uneducated and know nothing about history. And that's sad. So I wrote the book to, to uh, educate people quickly so they might know what, what, what's happening. Let me give you a, a case in point. Um, beginning in the 1930s, when the Weimar Republic in Germany uh, was beginning, there are amazing parallels between the Weimar Republic in Germany, which led to Nazi Germany and the takeover by Adolf Hitler, and what's happening in America. In addition, there were secret occult societies that enabled the Third Reich to rise in power and Hitler to rise in power. It's important that you understand that as an historical fact. The Third Reich was an occult party first and a political party second. All the symbols and logos used by Hitler, the swastika, uh, was, uh, came from ancient Tibet, and there's a reason for that. And the Tibetan uh, uh, mas ascended masters that Madame Blavatsky talked about, that swastika is an occult symbol that goes all the way back to ancient Tibet which touches on Shambhala, it touches on Hyperborea, the, the great underground civilization that the Tibetans believed in, uh, that the Nordic uh, peoples believed in, about this uh, visitation, if you will, by, by beings from the stars who uh, impregnated people here on planet Earth and they built a super civilization. Now you say, well, what does that have to do with the future of America? Everything. Because Jesus Christ said, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Well, what did he mean by that? Just to give you a brief glimpse into the book and the research and why I feel so compelled to share this information with you, is this. When you understand history, and many of you do, Hitler was all about building the master race. Blonde, uh, blonde, uh, uh, blonde hair, blue-eyed master race. Nordic race, which he believed the Aryan race was a genetically superior race. Nietzsche talked about this. And he employed the science of eugenics that the Rockefeller organizations uh, were experiment, experimenting with in cold water New York in the 1920s, and that was part of the motivation for the uh, uh, founding of Planned Parenthood by Margaret Sanger. Uh, it was to, to uh, abort uh, the undesirable races in order to produce a master race, and that's what Hitler did, but he got his ideas from America. Now, what does this mean to the, the history of America? It means this. Hitler and his occult beliefs and his scientific beliefs were integrated with DNA and the science of genetics as well as their occult legends and belief systems. And they believed that a race of godmen came from the stars, impregnated human women, and built super civilizations. Um, and they settled in what was called Hyperborea, which uh, uh, is in the Arctic regions uh, and the Poles. Um, and uh, that's why Hitler built a, a submarine base and a massive underground base there. 
and they believed in the Vril power, that's a, the black sun that is underneath the Earth's surface. And also it's a form of energy that you can acquire through meditation and technology, Vril Ya. Uh, and you may think this is strange, but that's really your problem if you're not educated because Hitler and the Third Reich were had highly advanced technology, far above the U.S. Uh, rocket program. Why, why was their technology so far in advance of U.S. technology? And they had UFO type technology, and they had mind control technology, and they had genetic technology. Where did they get the superior technology from? Well, they got it from the fact that they had scientists and people in technology that were very sophisticated, like Werner von Braun, who um, was a Nazi rocket scientist who came uh, along with 10,000 other uh, Nazi rocket and mind control scientists after World War II into the United States uh, through Operation Paperclip. But they had this advanced technology because they had what were called the Vril mediums, these female or Vrilya mediums, these, these female mediums, uh, one in particular who claimed to receive uh, the blueprints and plans on how to build technology for these UFO type machines. Now you can say that's nutty stuff. Well, I, I talk about it in great detail in my book A Prophecy of the Future of America and it doesn't matter whether or not you think it's nutty stuff. What matters is it's a matter of technological record and historical fact that their technology was vastly superior to ours decades ahead. So where did they get this technology? Well, they claimed, their scientists claimed, that they got it from a, a realm beyond this dimension. That's, that, those aren't my words. Those are the words of the Nazi scientists like Werner von Braun. Now, um, they also believed in, in the legendary island of Thule, and they had, it was the Thule Society, the Occult Society, and the Vril Society, an occult society, that put Adolf Hitler into power. You have to understand that. And Thule was a legendary island. Um, some people believe it was Atlantis. Some people believe it was related to Atlantis. And um, where the super civilization existed. And then there was a great, an account of a great flood. Uh, which destroyed Thule, and of course there's the account of the Great Flood which destroyed Atlantis. And these uh, godmen, uh, this super civilization, retreated into an underground civilization, Hyperborea, under the earth. Now, the Tibetan ascended masters are ve very familiar with that, and they're very much connected to it. Now let's put a pause on that. That's a matter of historical fact. And for those of you that may have difficulty uh, comprehending what I mean by the ascended masters in Tibet, uh, we could use the, the metaphor of the Batman movie, where the, the guy who plays Batman, when he's on his spiritual pilgrimage, he goes to these to this temple way up in the mountains of Tibet to get sacred knowledge. Now that may have been a screenplay for a movie, but it was based on, loosely based on, the idea of the ascended masters in Tibet, which the Nazis were deeply involved with, by the way. Uh, Hitler sent expeditions of scientists in Tibet, into Tibet. So here's the point, where is all this going? Hitler believed in a master race eugenics. Jesus Christ said, as it was <clears throat> in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Now, I expose all this in my book, A Prophecy of the Future of America, because you can't understand what's going on in the world. You can't understand Jesus Christ's statement, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man, unless you understand what I just recounted to you in, in, in a very short period of time. This is what happened. Hitler was genetically trying to produce a master race. Now, remember this legend about 
beings impregnating human women. That is a legend which uh, most of the ancient civilizations believe. They changed the names of, of the godmen, they changed the names of the people and the gods, and they changed the symbols, but the, the basic template of these godmen from the stars impregnating human women and super civilizations uh, was found in ancient Egypt and in legendary Atlantis and in the Mayan monuments and the Incan monuments and we go to the architecture and archaeological records of the uh, pyramids of the Mayan temples and the Incan temples and the other structures that they found, massive structures and pyramids they found under the Bahamas. Uh, what some scientists believe they have found Atlantis uh, uh, off the coast of Cuba, uh, and I've seen the underwater photographs, and I talk about this in the book, and that happens to be where the Bermuda Triangle is, and they're saying that this advanced civilization was off the coast of Cuba. I don't know if that's true or not, but the archaeological monuments, these monolithic uh, pyramids and ruins, prove one thing, that all these civilizations were highly advanced mathematically, uh, scientifically, and with technology, because the precision with which these monuments were built, like the pyramids, could not even be built today. How did they move these massive stones with such mathematical precision lined up to particular star systems and astrological calendars, if you will, with mathematical precision. Well, it was evident from the archaeological ruins that exist that they were advanced civilizations. Now, when we go back to Jesus Christ saying, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man, Jesus Christ is giving us a huge heads up about Bible prophecy and what is going to happen to the future of America. Because America has a secret occult destiny that was planned out by Sir Francis Bacon in the mid-1600s, who was head of the occult Rosicrucian order, and he planned, along with his colleagues, for America to be the head of the New World Order and the New Atlantis. And the Rosicrucians, as history shows us, morphed, if you will, into the Illuminati. And if you look at the back of your dollar bill, you see that strange pyramid on the back of the U.S. dollar, which has an occult eye, the all-seeing eye of Horus, or the all-seeing eye of Lucifer. Teenagers know what it means, because it's in their music videos. And um, it's an Illuminati pyramid, and at the base of the pyramid are the words in Latin, Nuvus Order Seclorum, New Order of the Ages in Latin, which means New World Order. And it's an Egyptian pyramid, and Egypt was built on the thesis of the God Kings, <clears throat> which is similar in some respects to the legends of Hyperborea. Now, um, on the right hand side of the back of the US dollar is what many people think is an eagle, but it's really a phoenix. And the phoenix comes from ancient Phoenicia, which was in the geographic area where um, Sumeria was, and in the general location of where Mount Hermon was, where according to the extra-biblical books like the Book of Enoch, which we don't put on the same level as the inspired and errant Word of God, uh, which is the Old and New Testament, it, it's not the inspired and errant Word of God. I want to be very clear about that. But the Book of Enoch is referenced in the Bible, in the Book of Jude, when it's talking of, about fallen angels. And in the Book of Enoch and other records, which again are not at the same level as the inspired Word of God, you read the account of the fallen angels, or the sons of God, descending upon Mount Hermon, bringing technology and impregnating human women. And then you have 
the beginning of understanding what Jesus Christ said as it was in the days of Noah. So it will be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Bible prophecy and the prophecy of the future of America. See, there's an occult plan regarding America. That's what, <clears throat> when you go to Washington, D.C., that phallic symbol, which is called the Washington Monument, the Capitol Dome, which is a womb, Washington, D.C. is a mirror city to the Vatican, which also has a dome or a womb and also has a phallic symbol. And those come from ancient Egypt. And all of that originally came from um, Babylon with Semiramis and Nimrod and the whole legend of Semiramis, Nimrod's wife, being supernaturally impregnated by a phallic symbol which is the beginning of the mystery Babylon religions, which is the basis for all the occult societies throughout the ages, which eventually morphed into the Rosicrucians and uh, the Illuminati and so on and so forth. So this occult destiny is being unfolded and um, it converges with Christ's words as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. And this is why America and other nations in the world are on a scientific uh, um, quest for transhumanism, uh, genetic breeding with animal human DNA, the creation of super soldiers, and this whole quest to unlock the power of our DNA and to create a race, if you will, of God-men, which is what Hitler was trying to do. But there's a deeper basis for it which I uh, un unveil in my book, A Prophecy of the Future of America, which takes us back to this question. When you understand this, you will understand what is going to happen to America in the near future, and you'll understand where America is in Bible prophecy on Paul McGuire. This is Paul McGuire, and I'm continuing on on where is America in Bible prophecy, and where will America be in the near future. And I was uh, talking about the fact that if you're educated uh, and understand history, you, you, you will know where America is going in the near future. When I, now, when I say educated, I'm not talking about uh, having consciousness uh, the size of a small box. That's not it, being educated. That's having consciousness and understanding that, that fits inside a small box. That would be the equivalent of having a very powerful computer or laptop and you're only using a little tiny bit of the memory or you're only using one app or a software application. And yet you have this massive computer that has all these apps, but you're only using one. And that's really what's happening with learning and understanding. The world and the universe and reality is, is uh, very large. And there's a lot of information that's essential to understand, to understand where we're going, where you're going as an individual, where we're going collectively as a world and a nation. <clears throat> and if you are only using one app to use that as a parable, if you will, you're just clueless. And that's where most people are because their education is in a tiny little box. You have to go outside the box of social engineering education, which is designed to dumb you down, um, and go to original sources. And when I say original sources, this isn't wacky conspiratorial stuff. You see, people who would dismiss uh, the topics that I'm bringing up as wacky conspiratorial stuff those are people that are uneducated. You see, an uneducated person responds to the thesis of someone who is educated and has done their homework. And I don't mean this in a proud or boastful way, because many of you are educated and you've done your homework. But we are surrounded with, by people who are, I don't want to be, uh, I'm not going to say what I think, 
but they're, they're clueless because they haven't done any research biblically. They have a very superficial, one-dimensional understanding of what the scripture says. They don't understand economics. Let's just talk about Atlantis. You know, people say, well, they dismiss that. Well, I'm not saying whether or not Atlantis existed or didn't exist, but there's a lot of people who believe that it did exist, including the great philosopher Plato, who wrote Plato's Republic, and he believed that Atlantis existed, and he believed it was a highly advanced civilization, and he claimed to have historical information that proved that Atlantis existed. And the philosophy of Plato is basically the, the philosophy that guides uh, the elite uh, who rule America and uh, our world today. They, 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 they devour Plato. They, in fact, some of them, they have a quotation, Let, read Plato every day. So the ruling elite in America and Europe, uh, the people who really run our world behind the political figures who are the puppets, they read Plato. And what did Plato say? Well, Plato believed in the Atlantis uh, organizational structure because, according to Plato, uh, Atlantis was ruled by ten god kings or philosopher kings an elite, a scientific elite, who ruled society uh, for the betterment of all. It was a top-down, pyramid, hierarchical structure with the scientific elite. And this is what the people who run our world today believe in. That's why the pyramid is on the back of the U.S. dollar. This is what H.G. Wells, uh, author of War of the Worlds, and uh, the Fabian Socialists believed. They believed in Plato's uh, uh, method of governing, and, and most of the people in Washington, really, if the, you talk to them privately, don't, they don't believe that you <laughs> have the right to, to uh, run the society. They, they give lip service to it. Uh, they, they try to uh, teach you that your vote matters, but in, re in reality, they're going to do what they want to do because they have the power and wealth, because they believe in Plato's concept, which came from Atlantis, of the God Kings. So this isn't a conspiracy theory. This, this is classical um, uh, history and the study of the great philosophers. Now, um, Sir Francis Bacon, <clears throat> who was head of the Rosicrucian movement, uh, was deeply influenced by Plato, who believed in the Atlantis this is historical fact, and he lived in the mid-1600s. And uh, through his relationship with uh, Queen Elizabeth, he had access to enormous amounts of wealth and had a guiding hand in the founding of America. And it was his plan for America to be, now listen carefully, the new Atlantis and the head of the New World Order, the, the New World Order. And that's what all that uh, uh, architecture in Washington, D.C. is about. The, the, the phallic symbol, the domes, those are all clues to, to a philosophy. And that's why so much of the architecture in uh, Washington, D.C. has a Roman look to it. Because remember, Rome was very much influenced by the philosophy of Plato. So, they believe in a scientific elite. That's the top of the pyramid, the Illuminati, if you wish, uh, that would, will rule society. And they believe in Orwellian society, now, uh, or a scientific dictatorship. So that's where we're moving here in the United States of America. Now, back to the genetic part of it, because this is essential to understand. Hitler wrote a book called The New World Order. So did H.G. Uh, Wells. <clears throat> he wrote a book called uh, uh, The Open Conspiracy, and he wrote a book called The New World Order. Hitler um, came into power through the involvement of powerful secret occult societies that go all the way back to the Rosicrucians, that go all the way back to Mystery Babylon at the Tower of Babel. And... Um, <clears throat> the Illuminati, and so on and so forth. And some of these occult societies 
were the Thule Society and the Vril Society. And they believed in the Nordic legends of a master race, genetically superior race, of godmen, Nietzsche, the philosopher Nietzsche, and those people that are educated know what I'm talking about. Nietzsche is a very uh, influential philosopher even today. So, so people who go into the knee-jerk reaction, because they're clueless, would attempt to dismiss this as conspiratorial talk when in fact it's not conspiratorial talk. An educated man or woman who studied history can see the through line and the structure in history of, of, of the subjects that I'm dealing with in A Prophecy of the Future of America, the book that I've written, because I, I'm trying to at hyper speed and in an entertaining manner. The purpose of the book a Prophecy of the Future of America, 414 pages, is to give you, if you will, a download in an exciting manner and in an anointed manner by the Holy Spirit of a tremendous amount of research so you can understand your life and your world and wake up out of the fog that many of you are in, or you can give it to somebody who's in a fog, and by the grace of God they can be woken up. I also talk about the Great Awakening that radically affected the United States of America. Jonathan Edwards, father of the First Great Awakening. And do you know that Jonathan Edwards, a highly educated man, Greek, Latin, Hebrew, uh, a great student of history, a brilliant intellectual, the father of the First Great Awakening, he wrote about uh, the Illuminati and uh, its danger to America and the occult societies. He, he, he understood the, the reality of that group. And so did George Washington, and so did Thomas Jefferson. They wrote about it, and they understood the relationship between the Illuminati and the European Central Banks, which is the same thing as the Federal Reserve in the United States, and the, the, the traveling companions of the Illuminati and the banking system. That's why your money has spiritual symbols on it. You see, these men, Washington, Jefferson, Hamilton, uh, Jonathan Edwards, were educated. And they never, for a moment, disputed the historical fact of the threat and danger of the Illuminati upon America. Because the Illuminati was founded in 1776, as was the United States. Now, Jonathan Edwards' uh, great-grandson uh, was the, the uh, president of uh, Yale, and, and some of his other descendants uh, were the presidents of the Ivy League universities, because Harvard, Princeton, and Yale were all originally founded to produce Christian missionaries. Did you know that? And now they are hotbeds of Marxist ideology. And his descendants, Edwards' descendants, who were the presidents of these Ivy League colleges, highly educated men, wrote in detail and warned about the dangers of the Illuminati being a tremendous threat. And these men were vibrant, intellectually deep biblical scholars. And they didn't for one moment doubt or dispute or dismiss the, the Illuminati and these ideas as mere conspiracy theories. You see, the people who dismiss uh, these things as mere conspiracy theories have a commonality. And the commonality is, and sadly to say, many Christian preachers uh, are in this commonality. They're uneducated. They don't know history. They don't know anything about the history of the Illuminati. And many preachers who should know better are completely ignorant. They are not like the strong biblical Christians of the First Great Awakening and the Second Great Awakening who understood philosophy and Plato and the Bible. Um, I don't mean this to be unkind, but they're shallow men. And as shallow men, because they haven't paid the price to learn, they can't lead because knowledge is power, and if you don't have knowledge, biblical and spiritual knowledge, as well as intellectual, uh, economic knowledge, you can't lead because you don't know what's going to happen next because you have no understanding of history. The old adage, those that don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. So we go back to the Weimar Republic, the occult societies in Nazi Germany, and we see a nation that is very much like America today. 
first of all, they had their own version of Illuminati music videos and, and immorality. They didn't have that technology, so they had cabarets. But if you look at the pictures of the cabaret performances that were going on as Nazi Germany was coming into power, the content of the cabaret performances were, were very immoral, uh, very sexual, uh, like our uh, uh, music uh, industry and our drug, pop music, sex culture. Very similar. Number two is their currency, the German mark, was inflated. They were printing money from nothing. They ended up, you, you had to go to the grocery store, listen carefully, with a wheelbarrow uh, filled with uh, German dollars to buy a loaf of bread. That's what happens with hyperinflation or quantitative easing when you print money from nothing. So you see, if you understand history, you know where America's going. And that's why I, why I wrote my book, A Prophecy of the Future of America, to educate people who are willing to be educated. And the occult societies put Hitler into power. And this is the irony. The occult societies that put Hitler into power uh, were integrated with the scientists of Germany, the rocket scientists, the genetic scientists, the mind control scientists, which we, by the way, and I talk about it in my book in great detail, imported into America. We, we brought all those scientists in, 10,000 of them, Nazi scientists, after World War II, to, to be the heads of our leading think tanks and laboratories and in, uh, scientific research institutions and NASA and so on and so forth, um, we brought them in after World War II, 10,000 of them, uh, through Operation Paperclip. Now, they had advanced knowledge, and that knowledge, by the way, is integrated in our Orwellian uh, scientific dictatorship today. So, Hitler and these occult societies and scientists were operating from a principle. They believed in the creation of God, men, and a master race. That's what eugenics was about. It was breeding a, ma a master race using DNA. But the basis for it was that they believed in these God men that came from the stars and mated with human women, and which, which they, the, the, according to the legend, they settled in Hyperborea or in the island of Thule, uh, deep under the ice, massive civilizations. Now, here's the point. Jesus Christ said, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Hitler believed in the breeding of God-men. This Hitlerian belief and the belief of secret occult societies going all the way back to ancient Babylon, going all the way back to Atlantis, going all the way back to the ideas of Sir Francis Bacon, going all the way back to Egypt, going all the way back to the Incan ruins and the Mayan ruins. They all shared a, a commonality and they all these super civilizations believed in godmen that came from the stars and made it with human women. I believe we're on the verge of a paradigm shift in America and the world where the scientific community, sparked by the discovery of, let's say, life on Mars or something like that, is going to announce that uh, the, the gene pool of planet Earth originally came from the stars in some kind of modified ancient astronaut theory like the movie Prometheus suggests. And that's going to be the modification of Darwinian evolution. And it will be the alien genesis. And it will be accepted. And it will cause a mass chaos, especially for a lot of religious people. But let's go back to what the Bible says. And I go into detail on this in my book, A Prophecy of the Future of America. Because remember, the plan was to make America like into Atlantis. Well, what happened in Atlantis? Atlantis, if it did exist, appears to, to have been uh, a super civilization that was destroyed by a great flood, just like the German uh, island of Thule, and they fleed to Hyperborea to, to settle a super civilization under the ice. Um, 
Jesus Christ said, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of coming of the Son of Man. What happened in the days of Noah? The sons of God, in Genesis 6, I'm paraphrasing, mated with human women and produced interspecies breeding, which was the Nephilim. The sons of God is a Hebrew term that all Hebrew scholars for thousands of years concur that the term, he, the Hebrew term, um, the sons of God, which comes from the Hebrew words, the Benai Elohim, means specifically, according to the Hebrew scholars, for thousands of years, the Benai Elohim, or the sons of God, means fallen angels, and nothing but fallen angels. So that verse in Genesis, where it talks about the Benai Elohim, or the, the sons of God, went into the daughters of men, human women, and impregnated them, and married them, it means that demonic beings, fallen angels, had sex with human women, producing a hybrid race called the Nephilim. That is an essential construct to understand in the Bible. It's absolutely essential that you understand this and that you transcend through research this Sethite view, which, which, which is, a, is a fallacy. Because even the early church, until the time of Constantine, believed in the interspecies breeding. That's why it's talked about in Jude. That's why Jesus Christ said, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the day coming of the Son of Man. Well, what happened? You see, the story of Noah is a very dull story if you don't really open up the multi-dimensional truths in the historical account of Noah and the flood and the ark. And you understand that the biblical account of Noah, the ark, and the flood is a DNA holographic digital account of history that the purpose of God in sending the flood was not only to judge wickedness, but we know it was more than simply the generic judging of wickedness because God wiped out the human race and all the DNA and the animal kingdom and all its DNA. He wiped it out and God intentionally had Noah construct an ark where two by two, male and female animals and birds and so on and so forth, and Noah and his family went into the ark um, to, to survive a flood that wiped out the animal and human DNA on earth, thus wiping out the corruption uh, by the Nephilim, uh, excuse me, the corruption by the fallen angel DNA, which produced the Nephilim. So the Nephilim DNA and the corruption by the fallen angel DNA, even to the extent of the animal kingdom, and that's a whole different subject, um, was wiped out during the flood. And you see that the story of Noah and the ark is a genetic story. That's why the animal kingdom, two by two, male and female, so they could reproduce after the flood. It's a genetic DNA story, and you have to understand that to understand the real history of the Bible and what Jesus Christ meant when he said, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the coming of the days of the Son of Man. When Joshua and Caleb saw the giants, it wasn't just large warriors. It was the Nephilim, because the Nephilim were referred to as the giants of old. When, when the children of Israel went into Canaan, which was Israel, and they had to conquer the Canaanites and the Hezites and the Girgashites and so on and so forth. These were, were tribes that were uh, uh, very much had their DNA chain uh, transformed. And there was the proliferation of the Nephilim, They're the giants of old that existed in all these tribes um, were occupying the Promised Land. They weren't just giants, they were Nephilim. And so, even when David slays Goliath, Goliath was an Ephilim, and so was his brother. And so, it's imperative to understand that when the Nephilim, excuse me, when the fallen angels came, they imparted to mankind 
highly advanced scientific knowledge. Now, there's an enormous body of research to support that. That is why they were able to build these uh, uh, pyramids and these structures, and there's evidence of highly advanced science and technology because the fallen angels brought that to the earth in the pre-flood civilizations like Atlantis. But the purpose of the flood was to wipe out the perversion of the DNA by the fallen angels. Now, when Jesus Christ says, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man, he's saying that the, that the proliferation of the Nephilim, the, the mating of human women with fallen angels, or the DNA co-mingling, which is happening in laboratories all around the world right now as uh, leading superpowers are creating uh, genetic supermen or super soldiers. They're mixing the DNA of animals and human beings. Um, and many people believe they're mixing the, the, the DNA of Nephilim secretly. This is what all these legends share uh, in comments, what, what, what the secret occult societies in, in, of Hitler's Germany and the master race, it was all about this stuff. And, and so transhumanism and the genetic interbreeding of a super race, of supermen, godmen, that's why the pharaoh, the god king, in the back of the pyramid and the dollar bill, all point to this. And that's the purpose of the phallic symbol, the Washington Monument, and the dome. It's, it's, a, it's a reproductive, it's reproductive mythological symbolic architecture that has a powerful message that goes right back to Sir Francis Bacon's statement in the mid-1600s that America would be the head of the new Atlantis and the new world order. So the secret of America's occult destiny is wrapped up <clears throat> in this interspecies breeding concept and you take it further than that as you get into this whole E.T. alien genesis thing and, and, and uh, alien visitation, whatever, which Jacques Vallée, the scientist who was featured in the movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind, he said that they're not extraterrestrial visitors. He said they're interdimensional beings. He was suggesting they were demonic entities that came from one dimension into our dimension. <clears throat> to mate with human women. Yet, it, we need to understand that they have technology. So that's what Jesus Christ was giving us a heads up about. That's what the book of Revelation, when the creatures of the abyss are released, when the Antichrist is released. So we have to understand this, and this was a huge feature in Nazi Germany. Now, in Nazi Germany, we have two things going on. And I deal with it in A Prophecy of the Future of America, 414 pages of research. Um, the Nazi scientists and technologists who built UFO-type technology, advanced genetic re research, mind control research, um, they believed in this uh, Superman, Ubermensch, uh, the, the Nietzschean Ubermensch, the Nietzschean Superman. That's where the... The, the comic book Superman comes from originally. And you, these movies like Thor, uh, Thor, Nordic God, Nazi legend myths, there's, there's a lot more in Captain America. Look at Captain America the movie and pay close attention to what the, the theme of it is. And the laboratory and the Nazi scientists, that screenplay writer understood things that, that many of you are not aware of. So, here's the thing. During Nazi Germany, the Church of Jesus Christ had no ability through the power of the Holy Spirit to discern that Hitler was an Antichrist force and the power of the Antichrist was taking over that nation through demonic principalities and powers. The Church in Nazi Germany was spiritually impotent. The, the Evangelical Church of Nazi Germany was very similar to the Evangelical Church in America which Jesus Christ called the Laodicean Church. I wish you were hot or cold, but because you're lukewarm, I'll vomit you out of my mouth. A powerless church in Nazi Germany. 
And that's why the forces of Antichrist were able to take over. And this is the, the irony. The German schools of higher criticism, which are essentially the intellectual template of the German schools of higher criticism, which, which indoctrinated the pastors and the Christians in Germany and France, and basically uh, um, deconstructed the Bible, said that there was no miracles, there, there was no resurrection, there is no supernatural, God doesn't answer prayer, the German, there is no Holy Spirit, the Christians and the church in Germany were stripped of the supernatural power and dimension of their faith. And they became humanists, like the church in America, which has rejected the dunamis, the supernatural power of God, for psychological motivational messages, because they don't believe in supernatural power messages, the power of God, the power to resurrect Christ from the dead, the dunamis, being clothed with power from on high, which is what the early church enabled the early church to rock the world. Power from on high, which is what caused the Great Awakening. They could not confront the forces of evil because of their unbelief. But behind the facade of technology and humanism and atheism, the secret German occult societies believed in supernatural power. The Vril Force was a supernatural power the Nazis believed in. So the Nazi scientists were downloading from the supernatural dimension, supernatural power, technology, UFO technology, they believed in clairvoyance, they believed in telepathy, they believed in mind control, and all these, these sciences that had a supernatural dimension. The swastika is a supernatural.